Are you looking for a revision plan to score 110 plus in UPSC prelims 2023? Baiju's exam prep IAS is here to help you with our target prelims 2023 crash course. Starting on March 1st, this course will include a focused 90-day revision strategy, live discussion of 400 plus current affairs topics, practice MCQs, Q&A sessions to address your doubts and much more. Subscribe to our YouTube channel now and stay tuned for more updates. Hello students and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. So for today's daily quiz, we have the following questions lined up for you. The first question is, which one of the following statements is our true regarding the legislative councils? It is a permanent house unlike the legislative assembly. One twelfth of the total members are nominated by the governor. To be a member of a state's legislative council, the person should be an elector or a resident of that state. Now we have taken this question because in multiple states, elections are to be held for, for the members of legislative councils. Now over here it is written that these are biennial elections. That is, they take place every two years, which means that the term of the members of the legislative council is six years where one third of the members they get retired every two years. So over here this is correct. Yes, it is a permanent house akin to the Raj Sabha. This however is incorrect. One sixth of the total members are nominated by the governor. One third are elected by the legislative assembly. One third are elected by the local bodies like the municipalities or other local authorities. One twelfth of the members they are elected by the graduates and one twelfth by the teachers. About this statement, this is correct statement because according to the Representation of Peoples Act 1951, if a member has to be elected as a member of the state legislative council, he or she should be a registered elector in one of the assembly seats of the state. Moreover, if the person has to be nominated by the governor, he or she should be a resident of that state. So, our correct answer over here is C. Now, the next question. How many of the following statements is are true regarding sickle cell? disease. The government plans to bring a mission to eliminate the disease in India by 2047. It is covered under the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arugya Yojana. It is a hereditary genetic disease. Now in the budget of 2023-24, our finance minister has made a declaration that we will be bringing a mission to eliminate the sickle cell disease by the year 2047. Now recently, during a post-budget webinar which had a title Leaving No Citizen Behind, Dr. V. K. Paul, who is Member Health of Niti Aayog, stated that elimination of this disease is an integral part of holistic vision for health for all in the country. Now, the disease is already included under the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, which provides full treatment of the disease free of cost. Now, it is a genetic disease where the red blood cells, instead of being in the usual shape, that is round and flexible, they are in a sickle shape. So, this affects their capacity to carry oxygen to the different parts of the body. Now, these sickled red blood cells, they also eventually become rigid and sticky and they can also lead to a blockage in blood flow. Now, over here, this is a correct statement. This is also correct and this is also a correct statement. So, our correct answer here is C. Now the next question about the Agnipat scheme, which of these statements are true about the scheme? It will recruit youth between the ages of 18 to 25 years every year. 75% of the recruited youth will serve only for 4 years. Now yesterday the Delhi High Court has declared the Agnipat scheme to be a very constitutionally valid scheme against the argument that it discriminates against certain sections of the society. According to the court, that is not true and the scheme is completely 
valid. Now the Agnipat scheme, it was introduced in the year 2022. Under this scheme, initially the government decided to recruit the candidates between the ages of 17.5 to 21. Eventually, this upper age limit was increased to 23 years. Now, the selected candidates, they will work for the Indian Army for a time duration of four years, after which only 25% of these candidates, they will be retained by the Indian Army and they will be allowed to continue for another 15 years under permanent commission. Apart from that, the youth who will not be retained, the 75% of the youth, they will be provided with a service fund which will be totally tax free. So over here, this is a wrong statement because the recruitment age is between 17.5 to 23 years. This is correct. Yes, 75% of the youth will serve for only 4 years. So our correct answer is B. Now the next question, which of the following is our true? Inelastic products are those whose demand or supply changes rapidly with their price. The supply of perishable goods is inelastic. The demand for food commodities is inelastic. Now recently there was an uproar on social media because of a check that was received by a farmer for only 2 rupees when he sold 500 quintals of produce. Now this raised a question regarding the inelasticity of agricultural produce in our country. What is inelasticity? Inelasticity of demand or supply is when either demand or supply does not change with the change in prices. If the prices increase, even then the demand will stay the same and the supply will also stay the same. So they are not impacted by the change in the prices. Now in India, most of the agricultural produce, it has an inelastic supply because the farmers either do not have information as to what are the prices that they should get or what product should be sown by them in order to reap benefits at the time of harvest. Secondly, many of the farmers being small and marginal farmers do not have any storage facilities. So their agricultural produce is perishable in nature. If they do not sell it in a definite time frame, then it will get rotten and it would not be sold off. So they have to sell it off as soon as possible, even if the prices that they are getting for that is lower. So over here, this is incorrect because inelastic products are those whose demand or supply do not change with their price. This is correct as we have seen in the case of agricultural produce. This is also correct because food commodities are essential commodities. Even if the price of wheat is high, the consumer will have to buy wheat because they will have to eat it, right? So that is why this is also correct. So our correct answer here is B. Now a PYQ from the year 2018. Which of the following statements correctly describes the meaning of legal tender money? The money which is tendered in courts of law to defray the fees of legal cases. The money which a creditor is under compulsion to accept in settlement of his claims. The bank money in the form of checks, drafts, bills of exchange, etc. The metallic money in circulation in a country. Now legal tender, it is any official medium of payment which is legally by law recognized in a country and that can be used for fulfilling any financial obligations be it public or private. So the correct answer here is B because this is a money which a creditor is under compulsion by law of the country to accept in settlement of the claims. Now the checks, drafts or bill of exchange, they are not legal tender because they can be refused as a mode of payment or settlement by any party. The national currency including the metallic money that is the coins and the paper money or the notes they are both recognized as a legal tender in the country. For example, rupee is a legal tender of India. 
Now let us talk about the fact of the day, which is Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat. We have taken this because under this scheme, Yuga Sangam tour of students from Silichar in Assam to Chandigarh has commenced. Now the idea of the Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat scheme was given by our Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi during the National Unity Day that is Rashtriya Ekta Divas celebrated on 31st October commemorating the birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. So this scheme, it commenced in the year 2015 in order to celebrate the cultural diversity of the country through mutual interaction and reciprocity between the people of different states and union territories in the country. So under the scheme, Various states and union territories, they will be paired with each other for a time duration, during which time they will carry out structured engagement with one another in spheres of language, literature, cuisine, festivals, tourism, cultural events and so on. So the paired states or union territories, they sign MOUs with each other where they define or delineate a set of different activities that they will carry out throughout that duration after conducting mutual consultation with each other. So this particular scheme, it will help in increasing the interaction between the different states and will eventually help in improving or strengthening the unity of the country. So with that, we come to an end to today's daily quiz. I hope you were able to understand all the concepts. So if you like the video, do not forget to like it, share it and subscribe to our channel for more such content. Thank you and have a very good day ahead.